Uh, John O'Brien is a consultant for the United Nations on North Korea. He's also a former British ambassador to the country who lived there from 2006, uh, the year Pyongyang conducted its first nuclear uh, test until 2008. Do you think, uh, I mean, what is this? I mean, will it be a test? Will it be a strike? I mean, what do you understand about what you're hearing from North Korea? Well, I, I doubt it will be a strike at this stage. I think a test is more likely. Uh, but there again, uh, even if they don't test by flying the missile over Japan, which they've done in the past, which would kind of annoy the Japanese at least, uh, a test of course violates a series of United Nations Security Council resolutions. It's bound to provoke a further Security Council reaction and it is also going to seriously annoy the Chinese who have been watching with growing dismay as North Korea has indulged in this great series of antics. They gave the impression that it would happen today, earlier on, you know, before now. It hasn't happened. Uh, how do you um, understand that? This is a standard North Korean game. They will raise expectations and then make nothing happen. Will it happen? I think it's going to happen, uh, but they will keep us guessing about the timing for as long as they can. Uh, in terms of the United States, uh, how are they supposed to respond to all of this? Because you would think that North Korea wouldn't want to take on the United States, but it's pushing the United States. So how should the United States respond? I, I have to say that I, I'm not an apologist for United States foreign policy, but I think that the American reaction to events so far has, has been very sophisticated and absolutely classic textbook diplomacy. Uh, the United States has drawn a line in the sand. It has made very clear to Kim Jong-un that if he does anything so stupid as to attack South Korea, like remember in 2010, uh, North Korea sank a South Korean warship and shelled a South Korean island, that you've seen the B-2s, you've seen the B-52s, just don't do it. They've also taken steps to de-escalate, and I think the announcement the, the other day uh, that they will delay a missile test was excellent. I mean, that gives Kim Jong-un a ladder to climb down if he wants to. He can claim victory to his own generals. Um, North Korea, um, it is trying to engage in diplomacy, they would argue. Uh, let's hear now from Dennis Rodman, a basketball player, uh, met the leader of North Korea, was asked uh, when he returned if there's any message from North Korea. Let's hear what he said. And one thing, he asked me to give uh, Obama something to say and do one thing. He want Obama to do one thing, call him. He wants a call from President Obama? That's right. He told me that. He said, if you can, Dennis, I don't want to do war. I don't want to do war. He said that to me. Well, it's interesting, isn't it? Because um, Obama suggests that he wants to be involved in diplomacy, but he's not dealing directly with the leader of North Korea. No, but America has reached out on several occasions trying to establish a meaningful dialogue with these people. Remember the Leap Day deal that fell apart, that North Korea picked apart almost as soon as it was signed? Uh, it's become evident that over the last months, several senior uh, American envoys have been in Pyongyang uh, and clearly got nowhere. Now, what Kim Jong-un is saying is that he wants to be treated with respect, as gang leaders tend to put it. Uh, he wants uh, America to negotiate on his terms. Uh, he wants America to recognize North Korea as a nuclear weapon state, which Secretary Kerry, uh, Kerry made very clear a couple of days ago is simply not going to happen. It's not just about the phone call, it's all that goes with it, and I can quite understand that President Obama is not going to go down that road. Certainly not now. Uh, John O'Reilly, thank you very much indeed for joining us.